Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're doing a bit of a different video. I have traded $110 worth of full art supporters for this bulk lot that we're going to look through today. And today our goal is to see if we can piece together a full 2009 Tsubasa Nakamura uh, crown tiger list or if we can make back our money from this uh, bulk lot. If I have enough pieces where I can just fill them in, you know, that gets the list done. But really, we're just going to have some fun with it. Um, by the time I see this, or by the time you see this, I'll be headed off to Georgia. So i um, going to have some like lower effort videos coming out. Sorry about that. But I uh, figured this was a fun one. Never done a profit or loss type video on this channel. So we're going to open this up, see what we can find. Uh, so um, the reason I'm specifying that 2009 world deck in specific is because in some of the previews, I saw that there was a Toxicroak G, the most expensive uh, card usually to find from the SP list, and then there was also a Dialga and a Yuxi level X, so from that list. So we're going to see if we can piece that list together from our bulk. Let's just get this open real quick. Probably should have done this before I started recording, but professionalism. So we have some cards there cards there, including a trading figure uh, game card, some cards with writing on them, a little bit of everything, have some theme decks, and let's get package two open, the smaller package of the two. Gosh, I wish this was as big, right? That'd be a joy. So, this one is just another theme deck. So, got most of it out in the first one, and then the second one's a theme deck. There were three theme decks. We're gonna go through those first, so it should be simple. I don't think any of them are full theme decks. Um, I'm guessing he probably looked to this stuff and took out the hollows at some point, but let's start with the Espeon one, just see. Maybe it will be, maybe we'll get lucky, I guess. No, the Espeon is in there, wow, okay. So I wasn't expecting the hollow Espeon to be in there. So that's actually uh, quite a find, because it's, I don't think it's valuable or anything, but it's a very nice looking card still in there. So this must be the full theme deck. Dodrio, one of my favorite cards. Blossom, really nice too. And also comes with the energy. So um, I don't know if I'm going to keep this together just because obviously I build decks from 2010 and 2011. So some of the stuff will be useful, but getting a full theme deck, pretty cool. I have lots of hope for the other two then. Um, that is very cool though. I'm very excited about the next theme deck then, which is the Embor theme deck. This uh, was actually one of my first theme decks. My first ever theme deck was the Gallade E4 theme deck uh, from 2009's Rising, Rising Rivals. I do actually have that sealed still, which is cool. But my second theme deck ever that I remember, probably got some more in the middle, was Embor. And I got this, um, this is a fun little memory. Uh, it was when my little brother was born. Um, just making sure the camera is recording, sorry. When my first little brother was born, uh, my dad bought me this, and uh, I was able to play TCGO in the hospital while we were kind of all waiting there, so, um, with this theme deck. And that's when I started playing TCGO, and that's why I started playing the game back in 2011, it was because of this, um, as well as some other starter decks on PTCGO at the time. Um, so really cool, it looks like it's the full thing. Uh, this theme deck was absolutely terrible, however, there is some neat cards in here. And this one I do think I'm going to keep together um, for the memories, because this is just pretty special. Um, it's one of the reasons I decided to do this trade. Very cool. We're going to do the last theme deck. This one is still in the plastic, which is astonishing. Does it have the... I doubt it has the extra booster in there. No. That would be something else. Uh, if you don't know, back in uh, Triumphant and Call of Legends... The theme decks came with an extra booster pack in there to try to promote them being sold because they were having a hard time getting off shelves, um, which is surprising because they had Umbreon and Espeon on the Undaunted ones the set before. They just didn't sell well back then. Um, the theme decks are pretty terrible, notably, uh, for competitive value. We have the playmat here. I'm not going to open it on camera, but this is really cool. I'm probably going to get this laminated just to keep it nice. And we have a rule book, which I think this is my oldest rule book. I keep some of the rule books that are older, and I think this is my oldest one. I think my other one that I have is from like black and white, so that's very cool. And then we have the Mamoswine theme deck with the Mamoswine Hollow as well. That's very nice. Um, the Triumphant theme decks weren't anything special, but um, 
Ooh, there's a pont. That's very nice. Pokemon communication. Okay, so it looks like this is a little bit edited because there's a Claylee in there. So maybe he played with this one a little because there's some upside down cards and there's some cards that weren't actually in that deck. Yeah, like Wall Rain was definitely not in there. Those are out of era. Uh, Team Aquas feel. So this one's a little bit edited, but still very cool. Um, this is actually the 2004 Celio. That's playable if I don't. Uh, if I'm not remembering things wrong, I believe that's playable in 2004 um, with the Rogue Wall Rain deck that uh, Kyle Kukasuvich used at Nationals that year. Didn't really hold up at Worlds because of Blossom starting to be uh, innovated into modern lists. So, like, once that was kind of out of the bag with Chris Phillips' Blaziken list, things kind of moved on from there. But enough, I'm not going to history rant to you. Those theme decks were awesome. Let's see what's in these bags. Um, we see a 2004 card here. I did remember seeing a ball toy in one of the preview picks from 2004 Worlds deck, so it's a little bit um, disappointing to see the ball toy just because we don't need the... I, I don't need anything from Magma um, because I, that's one of my few... Rather, my only completed 2004 Worlds deck is Magma, so... Let's get into this one just to start. Ooh, and we see right away uh, Subasa Nakamura... Lux Ray from Crown Tiger. So we're gonna put all the cards from Crown Tiger aside. That way we can hopefully, like I said, piece together that deck. So there we go. There's two Lux Ray level X and a Lux Ray GL. The GL base is actually kind of harder to find than level X, especially if you use cell print, so that's kinda neat. Copycat, there's actually a good card. Um Copycat's very good. And Lux Ray and Uxie. So um from what I remember, these level X's aren't too much. You can usually get them for like a couple dollars at most um, for the level X. But Uxie is actually one of the better ones uh, from my memory. Ooh, we see Ball Toy. That's really cool. Um, like I said, from the 2004 deck. So we're getting 2004 cards. But this right here, um, it wasn't the 2004 card in the back, which is why I'm excited. So I don't know what that one is on the back then. Um, we have an ATM Rock from, uh, this is from Jimmy Ballard's 2006 Evolutions deck that I believe took second at Worlds. Um, I can tell by the signature. That's 2006. Here's Surprise Time Machine, another one from Jimmy Ballard's deck. And, oh boy, what year is this? Is this 2004 as well? I think, yeah, this is Yamato Magma Pokemon Reversal. And we got another Jimmy Ballard Eevee this time. Looks like a couple Eevees. Strength Tarvin from Jimmy Ballard. We have Jimmy Ballard's Celio. And then we're back to Nakamura with uh, Dialga. I did remember seeing a Dialga level X. There it is. And a Skun Tank. And an Azel. So getting some good pieces here. Oh, and there's the big piece. Like I said, the Toxicroak. Um, usually World's cards from Diamond and Pearl on aren't too bad. EX era World's cards can sometimes be very expensive. But um, besides like Beach, uh, once you get to like Diamond and Pearl, the World's cards aren't bad individually. However, Toxicroaks are like $10 a piece, so hitting that's pretty big. We have an Unknown G. Always love Unknown G. One of my favorite cards. And there's, in fact, two of those. Very nice. This is just very exciting for me. Very, very cool. Hope you all are enjoying this as well. I wanted to share the experience. We have Fortress, uh, Rising Rivals. Not a good card, but I don't actually think I have one, so keep that for a binder. Um, Nakamura, Bronzong, and Cyrus. And Sableye. They did run one Sableye in their SP toolbox, which is interesting. And a Ditto. This is actually another one of the harder to get ones. Um, not because it's like particularly like a great card, but um, Ditto's popular. And the um, deck, uh, what you call it, Ditto is like very expensive. It was like a tech scene in 2009, and that's why it's in here. Um, but it's a very expensive card. Uh, Lucario, another good one to get. Um, Honchcrow, very nice. Then there's the Honchcrow for the deck, so we'll put that over there. We have Crobat. Ooh, double Crobat, nice. Toxicroak. We've got some Uxies. These are awesome. Um, always love getting Uxies. Toxicroak. It looks like we have a 2005 Rockets Admin, or 2006 Rockets Admin. Um, now, Rockets Admin aren't too much nowadays because of the Celebrations print, where you can... Uh, go cheap on that if you feel like it, but um, back in the day, Rockets Admin was pretty expensive for Celebration, so we won't mind uh, getting some extra copies of that. Never a bad card to have, because it's playable. Holland Energy, Team Magma Ball, this is a Ballard Holland Energy, uh, this is Yamato's Magma Ball. We have a Ballard Copycat, Celio, those are never bad. Um, we have Yamato, Maxi, 
Magma Conspirator, a Surprise Time Machine from Ballard, Holland Energy, and Magma Ball. So a couple of Magma cards in there that I won't be able to use for anything at the moment, but maybe they'll get uh, traded to someone if they're trying to complete the deck. But these Jimmy Ballard cards are pretty cool. We're going to put them all in a stack. Um, I'm guessing he did like pull out any like the worthwhile like EXs and stuff for a binder, but um, still for me this is pretty exciting. Seeing all of these. Uh, got some nice Totem Four stuff. Reversal's never bad. Uh, some of the Magma cards are going to be a little hard to purpose just because I said I already have the Magma deck complete that I have sitting off camera, so put the ball toy in there as well. And then we'll just have a stack. We'll just put the Diamond and Pearl Platinum block here and we'll have HS Bulk right there. So um, let's do the one with uh, his name on there. Sorry to dox him a little. His name is on, written on the back of a card. I don't mind if it's written though. I'll still play a card with a name written on it as long as the front looks good. And we have a very nice legend box. Not a particularly playable card, but um, it's one that I always like for the artwork. So there we are. Energy Exchanger, again, not playable, but cool. Murkrow. Uh, Life Dew is actually pretty good as well as Sage. Uh, the bane of all trainers. You hate to see energy search, but you know you can't complain. We've done really good so far. Um, energy search is just so common, and it's printed so many times, and yet it's so bad until like I think the first year it was playable. What's like 2012 Worlds, and then later in like Sword and Shield it was playable as well. But uh, that and Potion, yep. There's the the common one. Switch is actually pretty good. Printed a lot, but Switch is good in lots of eras. So we have a Trico. From Crystal Guardians and a Cacnea um, from Great Encounters. Great Encounters was my first set I ever opened and there's another one there. So Energy Search. We have a Seal. Okay. So Seal from Mysterious Treasures. We have Root Fossil. So we're getting some e-reader stuff in here. This is EX Sandstorm. Uh, Energy Switch. Not a bad one. Another one of those constantly reprinted ones, but it's not bad. Um, let's just put all the EX Trainers in one stack. That way I can sort it. I have a box for EX era stuff, so we'll put all of that together. We have Mysterious Fossil. Um, well, Mysterious Fossil seems bad. It was actually played in 2004 in the Waylord uh, stall deck, because fossils in the EX era did not give up a prize. So they were useful in Politoed Hit and Run and Waylord stall, because those Pokemon could switch themselves to the bench and uh, put up a fossil that didn't give up a prize. Uh, Mysterious Fossil is the worst of the fossils, because it doesn't have any effects on it. Root Fossil heals damage from itself. And then the best one is Claw Fossil, where with if your opponent attacks into it, they take 10 damage, but um, it's still, it's like your, uh, it's your third fossil choice, essentially. Another Potion. Energy Search. There is Claw Fossil. Um, Skull Fossil. Once they got to the Diamond and Pearl, uh, fossils became unplayable, unfortunately, because, uh, they just weren't worth setting up when, you know, you could Roseanne out a regular Pokemon. But, um, then Spiritomb came out and made them completely unusable. ER2, always actually a playable. I'm starting to mix these together. Let's get the Diamond and Pearl one separate. Uh, ER2 is always playable. Um, that is pretty cool to see. Not like an expensive card, but playable. Um, and I forgot to mention it with the original Energy Search, but... You see an EX Ruby Sapphire symbol here, but it's not bordered. And that is an uh, indication that it was from a later product. Um, it doesn't have an e-reader border because um, there's, I believe, EX Battle Stadium and the Gardevoir and Blaziken deck. There might be another product or two that has this kind of condition, but essentially um, they've reprinted cards from the e-reader era without e-reader border. And you also see that on the World's cards from 2004. Um, 2005, so let's put that there. Bebe Search, uh, one of the cheapest uh, supporter cards because it was printed three times, but um, it's one of the best supporter cards in Diamond Pro era. Always take that. Rockets Pokeball, you don't see that every day. I don't know if that's worth anything, but um, I will use it. Potion. We have another potion. Power Spray, there's an exciting one. Um, so Power Spray nets about like two to three dollars these days. I'm not out of Power Spray yet, but eventually 2009 decks I'll need it. Um, I mostly build 2010, but 2009 is also an era I like. Um, we have Double Full Heal. This is a not very good trainer, but make of what we will. Energy Switch, nice one to have, even if it's not super playable back then. Poke Drawer, there is a playable one, 2009. 
Super Scoop Up, another good one. Um, this one's seen a lot more resurgence in RSPK, um, funny enough, because of the Railer deck. You can just pick up a Pokemon. Um, works good with basics. Have another Root Fossil. Sorry, just checking if the camera's still recording. And we have a Potion. Um, the potions are the keep them being the bane, but it's fine. Bent Shield um, was playable in the 2010 World's Top 32 Don Fan ERL list, but not very playable in any other lists, but we'll take it. I have Platinum Arceus Old Amber. We have Dome Fossil from Platinum Arceus. Warp Point, hey, always playable Warp Points. Bloomberry, this is actually a good one to get. Um, I don't think it's worth much, but I don't have many of these, so... Uh, Bloomberry from EX Dragon. Very nice. We have Bertha's Warmth. Um, this is playable in Dialga Chomp 2010, so that's good. I see an Espeon from Majestic Dawn. I do actually have one of these, but I will gladly take another. Beat up just like mine, but that just shows that someone cared about it deeply, so. We're going to put that here. We have Pikachu from Majestic Dawn. Um, Ken Kinesina and Daisuke Ito did a lot of these arts that looked like this back in the day. I was never a big fan of them, but kind of neat. We have Glue. Um, this is from Expedition, and this is actually a playable stage one in that Wailord deck I was talking about. Um, the Wailord deck plays Blossom in it, and it also plays Vileplume, so it plays a thick line of uh, Oddish, Gloom, and Vileplume, because Oddish, uh, are for, sorry, Blossom heals damage uh, from one of your Pokemon, and then the vile plume poisons the opponent so you use the turns that you stall with the uh with the fossils that don't give up prizes to uh, set up poison on the opponent with vile plume it's a very bad vile plume technically because you have to flip for poison on a stage two but like back then that's not terrible if you can stall for time see a tauros from jungle um i don't know where to put the e-reader guy i guess i'll put him here tauros from jungle uh not a playable card but it's been a while since i've seen one of these we have potion we have Old Rod from uh, Dragon Frontiers, Wooper, we have Shellgon, it's getting some Delta species, we'll stick that there, in EX era kind of guys. I don't think either of these are particularly playable, but I do like Shellgon, big Salamence fan. Uh, we have Potion and Energy Search, these guys are seriously my banes of when you look through old bulk, that's what you find is Potion and Energy Search. We have another ER2, good card, Energy Search, not bad, Aaron's Collection, um, Pretty cheap supporter, but it's like a one to two of an every SP deck, so I don't mind getting more of those. Um, Miasma Valley, seemingly good card that never saw any play, sadly. And Oak's Visit, so we'll take Oak. So let's take what we have and clear it to the side. No World Championship cards in this one. I'm guessing they were all bunched up in that one. We might not see anymore, but still some exciting bulk to go through. We're going to put the EXR guys over there. Diamond and Pearl guys here. We'll keep the rest of it as is, and our one reverse hollow that we found. Ooh, we have world championship cards again. I think we're gonna wait on this. This one we'll save. We'll go into more non-world championship cards because it tends to be a little bit less uh, of a hype thing there. So we'll save the best for last. We have energy search and potion. God, I, I can never talk enough bad things about them. We have Life Herb, which is uh, actually playable in 2010, um, though I wouldn't use these arts in 2010. And I believe 2005, there's Steelix that could play them, so this will get pretty good use. We have Pokemon Retriever, great card, um, very cool. We have another Pokemon Retriever. These are essentially Rescue Stretcher if you've never played with them, so you probably know what Rescue Stretcher is if you play DLC. E-Reader, Energy Search, we have Drake Stadium. Uh, TV Reporter, that's a very good supporter card for 2004. Energy Search. Energy Search. Potion. They just never stop. Energy Restore. Energy Search. And we have Cosmos Discovery. Not a very good supporter, but I do love the art on that one. So I end up grabbing it from bulk when I'm buying bulk bins anyway. Plus Power. Ooh, we have some Lightning Energy. I actually don't mind Energy. Um, because I can always use it. We have Makuhita from Ruby Sapphire, and we'll stick that there. Holland Adventure, actually a very good supporter, not bad. Plus Power, we have a Potion, a Cosmos again, Master Ball, that's a somewhat okay card for playability. Strange Cave, I believe that's playable in the Fossil Box deck. 
Ooh, Poke Draw, another one, okay. Not bad. Potion. And another potion. We are never going to run out. Hey, there we go. That's very cool. This is probably my uh, favorite non-world champ or yeah, favorite non-world championship card so far. We have rare candy. I love rare candy. Very nice. Um, switch. We have TV reporter again. Very nice. Uh, Super scoop up. My favorite art of that card, and it's playable. Quick ball. Not bad. Ooh, Mudkip. This is actually a card I have multiple of because I quite like the artwork on it. We have Krabby from Great Encounters. Pokenav from Ruby Sapphire. This is one of the uh, Battle Stadium reprints because you don't see the e-reader border. Root Fossil. We have Steven's Advice. Not bad. Good supporter. Um, worth about a dollar these days. So we'll gladly take that. And we actually have multiple Stevens. Uh, Steven's Advice. Very good. Get good. Excellent. So these will definitely get played. Um... There is uh, an errata on this card, which makes it tough to build decks with it, because if you're playing 2004, you play with the old Steven rules, and then if you're playing onwards, you have to play with the new one. And uh, the way it works is that uh, the old Steven says if you have seven cards, including this card in your hand, you can't play. Um, if you have more than seven cards, sorry. The new Steven rule, which is how it's supposed to be printed, was if you have seven or more cards. Um, so it's like a difference of one card to play a bit with agility, which makes a big difference. So uh, getting some old ones is really nice because these will be useful in 2004 decks. We have Rare Candy in Energy Search. The Stevens and the Rare Candy, very, very exciting, as well as uh, Drawer. Just getting some more good trainer cards. Uh, never a bad thing. And, you know, an Energy. Uh, I don't mind Energy. I will use this in a deck eventually. Old uh, Energy is getting hard to find. Oh, very nice start to this one. Roseanne, my favorite supporter. Alrighty, so we have a Roseanne's Research, my favorite supporter of all time. A Special Darkness, so these are both playable. Um, I'm probably not any bit short on Special Darkness, but maybe someday we'll use it. Energy Returner, another HS card, not a very good one, but still. Interviewer's Questions, same deal, not very good, but still very nice looking. Potion. Field Worker. This is another one of my favorite supporters of all time, but it's just because the artwork is really nice. Um, I doubt I'll be able to get it to focus on camera, but there is Mew in the background of this card. Let's see if we can get it. No. Maybe if I tap the camera. No. Okay, well, you'll just have to trust my word that there's Mew in the background of that one. We have React Energy. Um, kind of playable from what I remember. I haven't seen too many decks playing it. Potion. ER2, very nice. Root Fossil. Pokeball, not a very good card, but it's cool looking. Energy Search, another e-reader one from Ruby Sapphire Base. Claw Fossil, two of those. We have Master Ball, EX Deoxys print. Potion. Root Fossil, Energy Search, Claw Fossil, Potion, Rocket's Mission. Um, I don't remember if this card is good or not. I don't build enough to the six, but it is a first to this card. Root Fossil again, Skull Fossil, Claw Fossil, Flint's Willpower um, is somewhat playable in 09. It's a supporter that works with SP, and SP are kind of good, so sometimes you can play that. Energy Search, Switch, always love seeing those. Another Rockets Pokeball, that will go to use for sure. Also got a really fun artwork. Technical Machine, uh, another Rockets Mission. Uh, this is the only bad Technical Machine, sadly. Um, the other ones from Diamond Pro are like at least okay in the Porygon deck, but this one's just not very good. Another Rockets Mission though. Energy Switch, always love seeing those. Rival, this is, Rival is like up there for one of the worst supporter cards of all time. I have so many of these because they're so common back in the day that printed it. And I believe uh, like three sets in Diamond and Pearl. Uh, Root Fossil. Ooh, I see Steven. Double full heal. Ooh, Lynette. That's just exciting. Lynette's Net Surge. Very good card. Love to see that. And a Steven from Hidden Legends once again. ER2. High Pressure System. Actually a playable stadium. Life Herb. Switch. Ooh, I need to see another Steven. It's Potion and Steven. Um, yep, this is the Eroded Steven from its second print in Power Keepers, um, where it says seven or more instead of more than seven cards. So, 
Uh, that will get used in like a 2008 deck. Pokeball and Slowking with Trump Card. This is not a, an entirely unplayable card. I don't think I'll be using it just because I don't plan on building a Slowking lock deck. But essentially, um, the Slowking from Heart Gold to Silver is really good because it can rearrange the top three cards of your opponent's deck. So if you play it in a lock deck, you can include one copy of this. And this guy is essentially, if any of your Pokemon were knocked out during your la opponent's last turn, you get to search your deck for a card, which is just a nice little consistency to add if you're already playing the Slowking line. But still, lots of EX era trainers. Um, most of them, you know, energy search aren't great. But we're getting some decent ones out of there. We'll put the energies over here. Our gold stuff over here. The energies aren't amazing, but uh, the rest of it is. This, yeah, these are our last two stacks. So we have another pack of bulk here from EX era, it looks like. Life Herb. Cynthia's Feelings, not a bad supporter. Rainbow Energy, not a bad energy. Energy Switch, Health Energy. We have Mary's Request. Hold on, Ruins. Mr. Briny's Compassion, that's a very good find. Very good. React Energy, two of those. We have Togetic from Great Encounters. We have two more Energy Searches. Three more Energy Searches. Root Fossil. There's a Piplup from DP Base, Energy Switch, Potion, Balloonberry, nice to see that again, Switch, two of those, Energy Search, and I see some Potions, Low Pressure System, Life Herb, Potion, Potion, Hound Hour, very nice, Grimer, some Parkle Silver stuff, Magneton, I actually really like the art on that, ooh, Windstorm, that's a winner card for sure. Okay, so we'll Magnemite and Loudrid at the end. Um, Windstorm is one of the best trainers from the EX era to find. This is definitely going to get used. I have already a deck in mind that I'm working on right now that will gladly uh, use the help of a Windstorm. So that is 2008 Torterra. Um, essentially, at this time, if you weren't a competitive player then, there was a card called Tessation Crystal that turned off all Poke Powers and Poke Bodies if it was attached to your active Pokemon as a tool card. Um, so you'd have decks that would play Cessation Crystal, and you'd have decks that would try to counter decks that play Cessation Crystal by playing Windstorm or Pachirisu. So Windstorm is good in so many decks. This is a great find. Very happy. And, you know, we'll take more energies, too. So we have the last one. I don't think anything will be as exciting as the first one, because that one was just packed with joy. But let's see what this in this last one with... Right on front, we have a Jimmy Ballard Bill's Maintenance. Let's see what's this all about. So, we have... Oh, I see a Rocket card, too. So, Jimmy Ballard's Bill's Maintenance. We have Pokemon Retriever. Rocket's Admin again. Steven. This is from Yamato's. So, this is an old print, Steven. And we have a Jimmy Ballard's Giant Stump. A Rainbow Energy and a Holland Energy FF. Both of those are decent energies. Uh... This is Yamato's Rainbow and Ballard's FF. Uh, we have Yamato Magma Conspirator, not a very splashable card, sadly. Yamato TV Reporter. And Desert Ruins, that's one of the better ones to find there, Desert Ruins. Yamato Copycat, another good one to find. Maxi. Full Flame from Ballard. Um, this was a burn stadium that helped increase burn damage. You'd play it because of Evolutions had Flareon in it that induced burn. Switch from Yamato, TV Reporter from Yamato, Elm's Training Method from Ballard, Holland FF from Ballard, Holland WP from Ballard, we have Rainbow Energy from Yamato, Strength Charm from Ballard, ooh, Rare Candy, very nice Ballard Candy, Giant Stump, Surprise Time Machine, times two, another Rare Candy, very nice, Magma Conspirator and Desert Ruins from Yamato, we have Elm's Training Method, another Rare Candy. Yeah, that's great. Um, Underground Expedition, times two. It's one of the better supporters to find. Steven, very nice. TV Reporter, we have another Brinies, this time World Championship. Very good find. Steven again from Yamato. We have a Ballard Bill, Pokemon Reversal, and... We have some trading figure card games to end it off. Now, if you don't know, there was a uh, trading figure game 
where you'd use figures and they had these Pokemon card-esque uh, little helping things for the game. So we have Accuracy, Max Revive, and Switch. So I don't actually own any of these anymore. I used to, but I don't know what happened to them. But the Switch is the coolest one by far, if you ask me. Um, it'll be a fun joke to play it in the deck. Uh, do not take this to a tournament. You will get disqualified. But very cool to see those after such a long time. So very exciting. Um, I'm going to make a cut in the camera now. I'm going to see if we can piece together that 2009 Worlds deck real quick. And we'll kind of recap after that. Hey everyone, so we have good news. I'm, down, I'm not deciding to total up the value of the, uh, value of the cards, because honestly, there was a lot more than I expected. Uh, I'd say I got my money's worth, just because, you know, well, first of all, I didn't spend money, it was a trade. And second of all, um, I just really enjoy doing this thing, so for me, it's almost like paying to have fun. So, even if I did lose, I'm really excited. What we did get, in fact, though, this is big. We finished the deck. Not with exactly just the pieces here. Um, the pieces that he had here were only the Pokemon lineup. We didn't get any Galactic Inventions, uh, and there was only one Trainer Supporter Stadium card. Um, so it was just these Pokemon, but crucially, these Pokemon, and then there was the one copy of Cyrus. But we do have that finish. I'm not going to do a full deck profile video because I don't play 2009, so I can't explain the deck fully to you, but... We do have it. I'm just going to lay it out for all to see. We have finished Crown Tiger. Um, we got the full thing in here. Um, this isn't how I would uh, order the deck, by the way. I just had the sheet here, so I'm just going to lay it out in the order of the sheet, like a checklist almost, uh, just putting what we got. Like, it has the UC separate from the level X, which is kind of funny. But we really, uh, we got there. We finished the deck. So... As you can see, there is all of the Pokemon that we got in here. The Ditto was actually one where if I didn't have it here, I would not be able to uh, get it for the deck. And Uxie Level X is also a really difficult one because I don't have any World Championship copies. And the very odd supporter lineup of this deck, we're just going to lay it out kind of swiftly. But we have, like I said, a weird layout here with the stadiums in the middle and at the end. But... We finished it. None of the inventions were in our finds here besides one power spray that we found. The rest of it was just from my stash, but thankfully I have a stash that's big enough to finish this and the energy. So there is all 60 cards with the help of this trade. We have finished 2009 Crown Tiger. So very cool there. Um, over time, I'll probably go out and uh, even see if I can get the rest of the World Championship cards for here. Some of the ones I put in here are just like not like uh, not specifically like this World Championship deck. It's some other World Championship deck. Like uh, these are Steven Silvestro Poke Turns. So eventually, I'd like to go back um, over time and maybe fix that up a little bit, get it to be all unified, get these to be in World Championship copies as well. But still, this is a great achievement. We achieved my main goal of today, which was to finish this deck. Um, which otherwise, I just like wasn't really in any hurry to get to because the pieces are annoying like ditto and uxie level x and unknown g those are like pieces that i have to go chase down so uh very big um so thanks to uh aaron for doing the trade with me i was really uh, uh um excited because i just love doing these bulk trades i've only done a couple of them but every time i do a bulk trade it's so much fun looking through bulk unless it's you know like evolving skies commons uncommons um which that you know, gotta hope to avoid that. Hopefully I never do a bulk trade for Evolving Sky stuff. But I was very excited to look through this. Um, the full theme decks, very unexpected. Um, I honestly was expecting those to be, you know, uh, like the hollows taken out and like the the Mammal Swine one looks like it was played with, but like that's fine by me, honestly. It's still most of the deck and uh, the Espeon Hollow was a very nice surprise. Embor one being full, very nice because... Um, I think it's full. I believe so. I could be wrong. Maybe that's not the deck that's, you know, the full thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe the Samurott's not supposed to be in there. But, whatever. We'll we'll fix it up if not. I know the Simi Seer is supposed to be here. I think there's supposed to be a fighting Kunk Elder line. So, yeah, I think actually this isn't, isn't full. But, we'll look over it and fix it. 
So anyway, thank you all so much for watching this cool bulk dive video. I can't say for sure that I'll be able to do one of these soon, but if one of you maybe, I guess, uh, would want to help me do one soon by just uh, sending me your bulk in a trade, you know, I sound greedy saying that, but like that's the only way I can do another one of these videos, I guess, again, is doing another bulk trade. So if anyone wants to do some kind of bulk trade, I'd be open to it in the new year, even just like buying bulk um, from, I usually only buy like gen three and four stuff. You know, I guess like E-series stuff too, but I'm not like big into that and that's a big risk, a lot of money. So uh, yeah, three, four bulk is my favorite. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.